Dang okay, it. folks, we're going to go ahead and um, get started. Um, if I have to get up and leave at some point during worship, we're, one of ours is a little bit sick. Rose is sick this morning, and so we're, we're juggling that right now. Um, but just, just know that um, if I'm a little distracted, that's what's going on this morning. Um, do you want to let you know about some announcements that we have? We're going to be starting um, a Bible study this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And so we'll do that every Wednesday, and it'll be a Zoom Bible study that will be led by Joyce Couch. Um, and so I'm excited about this opportunity for, for folks to join in and, and to take part. I will be emailing some scriptures to you um, if you want to read them in advance. But if you don't have time to read the scriptures, that's okay as well, because um, Joyce is an excellent teacher. Um, if you notice in the chat function, Neil has posted to send me some photos about Mother's Day. Um, the email address is there, media at avonumc.net. We're going to be celebrating women next week. So um, it can be a picture of your biological mother. It can be a picture of any woman that has been like a mother to you. And my hope is to put this together um, as a celebration of women and the, the nurturing and the different ways that, that women can support um, um, one another, but also that they just support us and, and help us to grow um, into to better human beings. And so if you will send me those pictures, it can be um, as many as you want for as many women as have made a substantial impact in your life. I'm very um, excited about a mission opportunity that's coming up this Thursday. Uh, Avondale Samaritan Place, our mission arm, has received a grant from the food bank to do a mobile food pantry. And so what that means is we're gonna be receiving um, something like 8,000 pounds of food on Thursday that we will box up into 40 pound boxes that we are able to give away to 200 people. Mm. And so um, this is for folks who have been struggling uh, financially, that may not already be served by Avondale Samaritan Place. And so if you can spread the word, if you need food, you're welcome to come by for the mobile food pantry. Um, the, it starts at two o'clock and we're gonna go till we're finished. Um, it's also gonna help us give some food to the school families that we have been supporting as well. And so um, I just can't say enough about how excited I am about this. Just um, I hate that people are struggling to, to find food right now, but I'm glad that we're able to meet a need for our community. Also, if you haven't yet gotten your communion elements, uh, grab those during the prelude. Um, I have a hot dog bun today because that's what I had in my pantry. I do actually have grape juice today because I went to on my, my uh, weekly shopping trip yesterday. If you don't have grape juice though, you can use um, apple juice, you can use water, can use whatever you have on hand. Some of you might have brought something stronger because we're not on church grounds right now <laughs> and that's okay. So um, whatever you've got, grab that for uh, communion, which will happen later in the service and we will share it with those that are um, in our households and some of us will share it by ourselves, but it's like we are all coming to the table together. Um, you can use orange juice, right? Yes, you can use orange juice, Margaret. And then um, last, if you have your Bibles, we are going to um, have two scriptures today. It's going to be from Acts chapter 2 and John chapter 10. So if you want to get your Bibles and go ahead and mark those places, you can do that as well. And now let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we do give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the creative ways that we have found to, to still be present with one another, to connect and to come together as a community of faith, as a group of people who seek to follow you and who praise you. Quiet our hearts and our minds during this time of worship so that we can be renewed and refreshed and so that we can spread your love and your light in our world. We pray this in Jesus' holy name.
continue with our Easter season because Easter is not just one day. It's an entire season over several weeks of time, just as Jesus reappeared to his disciples time and time again. And we have an abundance of days to celebrate new life, to celebrate resurrection. The early church shared the abundance they had in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. So we create a temple of worship in our hearts. It's a temple that connects us across boundaries, across distance, and across time. But as we share in this worship, we will stay connected because at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit, that spirit which makes us all one. And now I light a candle. And I invite you to light your candle as well. This light reminds us of God's love. It reminds us of God's light in us and around us. And so now together we are going to center our hearts as one to begin. So let's take a deep breath together. Everybody breathe in and breathe out. Take another deep breath, breathe in and breathe out. And I invite you at this time to place your hand on your heart. Perhaps you wanna close your eyes as well as you continue to breathe in and to breathe out. And let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. and living God, heartbeat of all creation, help us to take this time to center on you, for you are the one who made us. You are the one who gave us life, and you are the one that continues to be with us in every moment of every day. You're with us in every breath. You're with us in every step. And so hear this assurance from God. Be still, O heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and come and center here. You are mine, secure and free. Let's take another deep breath, making sure our shoulders and any tension that we feel in our bodies is letting go with that breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's take another one, breathe in. Breathe out. Now let us clasp our hands together as though we are putting them together in prayer. Keep breathing in and breathing out. And may the feeling of our two hands touching one another remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. 
as close as our hands are right now, it's a reminder of how close God's love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. We offer a prayer song of letting go. Into your care we offer <clears throat> now our worries, fears, unstrung. We turn to you and know you are near. Your light, our love, and life. Amen. Jesus used the metaphor of a shepherd several times in his ministry. We will hear a song during our prayer time using the most famous instance from Psalm 23. We will hear that later in our worship service. But in this passage that you're about to hear from the Gospel of John, the sheep know the shepherd really cares about them and that that shepherd offers what they need, good, abundant, green pastures to eat in. They recognize the shepherd who takes care of them as they hear his voice. I assure you that those who do not enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but rather climb over the wall are thieves and outlaws. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again, I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, that they could live life to the fullest. There are so many ways to live life to the fullest right now, or as another version of the scripture calls it, living life abundantly. Being together either physically or virtually is one important way for us in this moment. Perhaps we can keep up some of our connection habits we've exercised well beyond our time of isolation. This next scripture is an extended version of our theme scripture for our Easter season worship series. And it shows us the value that the early Christians, some of whom had to gather in secret and in isolation, how they were supporting one another abundantly. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate at their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Back in the year 2000, not 2020, but in the year 2000, that was my senior year of college. And about three weeks before I was scheduled to graduate, I was playing intramural softball, which I truly loved. I had done it every year in college and had played growing up and just, that was my sport. And it was three weeks before graduation that we were in the game that would, if we won that game, that we would go to the playoffs. Yeah, it's just intramurals, no big deal, but it was a big deal for us in, that were playing on that team. And so as I rounded second base and was coming into to third base, I had um, 
to try to, to get to home plate to, to score a run. They threw the ball and to third base and I knew that I had to slide if I wanted to be safe. And so as I tried to slide, you have to realize that we're playing intramurals, so we don't have fancy fields. It was all grass. But as I went to slide, my right knee, my right leg slid and my left knee dug into the, the grassy area with my cleats. And it was that moment that I heard all the snapping and the crackling and the pain. And I blew out my knee. I will say we did make it to the playoffs, but I didn't get to play in the playoffs. Um, that moment forever changed my course and, and my life. I was devastated. I felt robbed of many things. I had to graduate on crutches. I don't remember much of my graduation because I was on a lot of pain medication. I had to have three surgeries over the course of nine months and countless sessions of physical therapy and therapy that I was doing at home. And because of how badly I messed up my knee, I had to turn down a job offer in Montgomery. Um, I, I did graduate on crutches. I was in a wedding on crutches. I lost my independence for quite some time. And luckily for me, I had parents who loved me and didn't say, tough luck, could figure it out. They, they let me move back home with my diploma and my crutches in hand. But it was a hard time for me. I felt like so many hopes and dreams and things that I had planned for myself had been taken away and I didn't know what I was gonna do with myself. I see that happening a lot for people as a result of COVID-19. Life as we know it has forever been changed. Sometimes the, the sacrifices that we've endured because of our attempts to slow this virus, sometimes those sacrifices can feel like we've been robbed of our well-being, of our hopes, of our dreams, of our aspirations. We've seen people talking about milestones that have been lost, people who haven't gotten to go to their eighth grade dances, seniors who haven't gotten to go to proms, or um, seniors in high school and college not getting to walk across the stage as they had planned in their graduation ceremonies, weddings having to be postponed or done with just five people instead of everyone that they had planned to be there, trips that people had been planning for quite some time, We've seen some real hardships as a result of this. People are losing loved ones. They're not able to have the big funerals for their loved ones that they, they would like to because of only allowing 10 people to be there. People are losing their jobs, their financial well-being. And I find myself many days wondering if I'm gonna wake up and this will have all been some kind of really crazy, awful dream. But I don't think that's gonna be our reality. In these two scriptures that, that we hear today, we hear from John 10 and from Acts 2, we see the, the desire of God being shared by the writers of, of uh, by, the, by John and by Luke who wrote Acts. And we see them showing that the desire of God is for us to be taken care of. The desire of God is for us to live life to the fullest and it's for us to support one another in abundant life, um, in community, around a shared table to celebrate one another with gladness. And so one of the things that has really meant a lot to me during this time has been the, um, the shared mantra that, that we see with people that, um, that we're all in this together. The idea that we all, if we do our part, that we can slow the spread of this virus, that we can also help take care of one another, and that it's for the good of all humanity. The early Acts community, they were struggling. They were living in fear for their, because of their allegiance to Christ instead of their allegiance to the Roman government. They endured hardship, they endured great persecution, they were worshiping sometimes in what would be called an underground church because they knew that there was a possibility of death because of their faith. But it says there in Acts that they ate with glad and generous hearts. They ate together with glad and generous hearts. They felt the abundant life that Jesus talks about in John's gospel they lived that mantra, we're all in this together.
And I want to be clear about that, that idea around what it is, what abundant life is, because in our American culture, a lot of people think it's about prosperity, it's about wealth, it's about amassing lots of things. I can't tell you how many storage units um, that we have just in our area alone that people pay to rent storage areas to put all their stuff in. It's, it's that idea of abundance. But Jesus's notion of abundance wasn't about wealth, it wasn't about opulence, it wasn't about trying to have all the latest gizmos and gadgets. Jesus's idea of abundance was living life to the fullest. It was about having a sense of purpose, about having a sense of peace. It was about living with glad and generous hearts that no matter what life threw at you, that you understood that we are all in this together. And that when life throws you the worst, that somebody's there to support you and to help pick you up. It's about recognizing the voice of God in your life and following that voice of knowing that shepherd's voice without a shadow of a doubt and following that voice, that will for you. One of the things with, with COVID-19, with the pandemic, yeah, we feel robbed of many things. We feel like the thief and the outlaw has come into our lives and has stolen a lot from us, has killed a lot of things, has destroyed a lot of things. But one of the pros that I have seen over and over again are people emerging to do good for other people. Just like we are, have volunteers coming this Thursday to help with our mobile food pantry. I've also watched people start to slow down. They're not caught up in the rat race of having to be here or there or all the extracurricular activities. They're spending more intentional time with their families. And they're also spending more time outdoors. They're planting gardens, they're walking in their neighborhoods. They are enjoying the beauty of spring. And we see that goodwill, goodwill that, that goodness of humanity welling up all around us. This past week, I was talking to the leader of the face mask ministry. This woman, um, I would call her a powerhouse. I mean, I knew her before the face mask ministry. She's very active with our Girl Scouts, but she's also very active in our community, always trying to do good for others and, and lead, um, especially young people and doing good for people. She's also an excellent seamstress, which is how she got into making the face masks and created this Facebook group that now has thousands of people all over the country creating these masks that they're able to give to healthcare professionals. But when she called me this week, she wanted to talk to me about the t-shirt ministry that they're starting to cut up t-shirts to make masks for everybody else. And for her, she said, six months ago, she never would have dreamed that she would be making face masks for healthcare workers, that she would have been cutting up t-shirts for the average person she has just always been a person that when she sees a need, she tries to meet it. And so she tried to do that with the face mask ministry. And she says now because of that, she will be forever changed. She says she's met people that she never would have met, people from all walks of life, people with different political affiliations, people of different races and of different nationalities. And just in this t-shirt crew alone, People were sent by the Birmingham Job Corps to help her with this, this endeavor. People who had lost their jobs because of COVID-19 are being given jobs by the Job Corps to go out and to try to do good in our community. And so she said there were three people that really stood out to her that day that were there in our gym. She called it hallowed ground or a hallowed space. And I thought, I never thought of our gym like hallowed space, but it really is like that with so many great ministries that happen there. But she said one of the people was a Vietnamese nail tech whose shop had been shut down and she couldn't work. Another was a retired African-American security guard who needed some extra work to help make ends meet. And another was a Caucasian student who wasn't able to get licensed as a medical tech. He's done all his coursework and whatnot, because he ha but he hasn't been able to go take his test because of COVID-19. And so here are these three people from very different backgrounds, from very different walks of life, cutting up masks and able to get to know one another. In a sense, they were there breaking bread together, doing good for all humanity. And they were thankful, in spite of the hardships that the pandemic had thrown at them, they were thankful to be able to serve. That's what abundance looks like. That's what it means to live life to the fullest. 
you know, I thought 20 years ago that my life was ruined. I was mad and I was upset. I was devastated by the accident that had happened with my knee. But 20 years later, I can look back and see how it changed me. See that I might not have gone to seminary when I did or might not have gone at all. I wouldn't have met my husband. I wouldn't have my children. I wouldn't be here in Avondale. I hope that when we look back 20 years from now on the pandemic, that we will see that we have been changed for the better. I hope that we use this and take this as an opportunity instead of seeing it as this terrible hardship. Yes, there are challenges and yes, there are hardships, but some of it's about the outlook on life and the ways that we can change for the better. And so today I wanna to share this video to close my sermon that is my prayer for not just our community, but for the entire world. I don't want about the virus again, then I'll go to bed. But my boy, you're growing weary, sleepy thoughts about your head. Please, that one's my favorite. I promise just once more. <laughs> okay, snuggle down, my boy, though I know you know full well. The story starts before then, in a world I once would dwell. It was a world of waste and wonder, of poverty and plenty back before we understood why hindsight's 2020. You see, the people came up with companies to trade across all lands, but they swelled and got much bigger than we ever could have planned. We'd always had our wants, but now it got so quick. You could have anything you dreamed of in a day and with a click. We noticed families had stopped talking. That's not to say they never spoke, but the meaning must have melted and the work-life balance broke, and the children's eyes grew squarer, and every toddler had a phone. They filtered out the imperfections, but amidst the noise, they felt alone. And every day the skies grew thicker, till you couldn't see the stars. So we flew in planes to find them, while down below, we filled our cars. We'd drive around all day in circles. We'd forgotten how to run, we swapped the grass for tarmac, shrunk the parks till there were none. We filled the sea with plastic because our waste was never capped. Until each day when you went fishing, you'd pull them out, already wrapped. And while we drank and smoked and gambled, our leaders taught us why. It's best to not upset the lobbies. More convenient to die. But then in 2020, a new virus came our way. The governments reacted and told us all to hide away. But while we all were hidden amidst the fear and all the while, the people dusted off their instincts. They remembered how to smile. They started clapping to say thank you and calling up their mums. And while the car keys gathered dust, they would look forward to their runs. And with the skies less full of voyagers, the earth began to breathe, and the beaches bore new wildlife that scuttled off into the seas. Some people started dancing, some were singing, some were baking. We'd grown so used to bad news, but some good news was in the making. And so when we found the cure and were allowed to go outside, we all preferred the world we found to the one we'd left behind. Old habits became extinct, and they made way for the new. And every simple act of kindness was now given its due. But why did it take a virus to bring the people back together? Well, sometimes you've got to get sick, my boy, before you start feeling better. Now lie down and dream of tomorrow and all the things that we can do. And who knows, if you dream hard enough, maybe some of them will come true. We now call it the Great Realization and yes, since then, there have been many. But that's the story of how it started and why hindsight's 2020.
This is my prayer for us that 20 years from now, we will look back and realize that we have had a great realization and that even in the midst of this, that we are better for it. May it be so. Amen. Today, as we enter into our prayer time, I do uh, want to bring a few prayer requests, pr prayer requests to your attention. Um, Neil has posted the people that we have on our list in the chat session, and so I hope that you will read those names and remember them. Um, we're glad that Randy is with us today on the call, Randy Thomas. He was moved to Spain Rehab, um, I don't remember what day, but one day this week, and so he is doing well there, and Henry is able to be with him, and so um, they're, to, they're worshiping together today with us. Mary Pearson uh, had her kidney stone removed on Friday and all went well with her procedure. Um, and so we are glad that she was able to come home and is doing well in her recovery. She will have to have one more procedure um, likely next week, but she's doing well um, overall. Also want to remember uh, Chris Davis, Jeannie and Jim Davis's son, he had his last treatment this week and so they are glad that that is behind them and that hopefully he can continue to recover and, and to grow stronger. And then we want to remember, um, offer sympathy to Andrina Lapsley. Many of you know we've been praying for her, for her husband, Eddie, who was on hospice and he passed away earlier this week. They had um, the graveside funeral yesterday. Um, and so we wanna remember her and, and her daughters and her entire family in our prayers. And so today, as we pray, um, we're going to do so with a, a music video that's called Shepherd Me, O God. It's one of my favorite hymn tunes that um, is based on Psalm 23. And so I invite you during this time to listen to the words and to pray for these people and the other things that are impacting us in our world. Let us pray.
As we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion, um, I do invite you, if you have your elements with you, to go ahead and, and gather those close by. It is a reminder that even though we can't be together in the sanctuary to gather around God's table, that we are still able to be together in our collective tables. We have multiple smaller tables represented, but together they represent the one big table that is God's table where we will all someday feast at that heavenly banquet and for that we give God thanks. And so now we are going to pray together. We're going to confess our sins remembering that our God, that the God we serve is a God of grace and of forgiveness and we're going to give thanks for the opportunity to be together and for the abundance of our tables. And so let us pray. Shepherding God, we gather in your name. We gather together invited by Jesus. And we confess that we have not always loved you with our whole hearts. We have not always followed your will for our lives. We have failed to be obedient individuals and an obedient church. Forgive us, God, we pray. As we gather now, we remember how Christ sacrificed himself for all of us. We remember how he took the bread and how he broke it. And we remember how he poured the cup and how he told his disciples to drink it and how he explained that the broken bread and the outpoured cup, how both of those together represented his broken body and his blood poured out for us. God, today we remember, and God, we give you thanks. And because of Christ, we are bound together with your spirit in union with each other. And so as we continue to pray together, I invite you all to repeat after me. Feed our bodies and our spirits. With your comforting presence, so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this bread, bless this bread, and break open our hearts, and break, break, break open our hearts. Bless this cup, bless this cup, and pour out your love, and pour out your love, so that we may be for your world, so that we may be for your world. Christ's body redeemed by His blood. Christ's body, redeemed by his blood. We pray this in the name of you, O oh God. We pray this in the name of you, O oh God. Our creator, our creator, creator, our redeemer, our redeemer, redeemer, and our sustainer. And our sustainer. And as your beloved children, we now boldly pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, in heaven Lord, out of be thy, name. thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And ever. Amen. Amen. And now in our homes, I invite you to take some time together to break the bread, to dip it into the cup, 
And if you're by yourself, you can do that solo. If you are with other people in your home, I invite you to say to one another as you give it to one another, grateful. So whether alone or whether with people, as you take the bread and as you drink the cup, I invite you to respond, grateful. 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 Gracious Father, we give you praise and thanks for this old communion. Body and blood of your beloved son, the body, uh, hello, hello. God's love poured open to make us new, Lord, make us new. Let us pray. Almighty God, we do give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit, renewed by your body and by your blood, to do great things for you. We pray this in the name of the living and the risen Christ. Amen. Just a couple of quick reminders. If um, you have any leftover bread or juice, uh, whatever elements you use today, uh, the best way to discard them is to either eat them or to take them outside and to feed them to the birds and give them back to the earth. That's what we do every time we have communion because they have been consecrated at this point. So I invite you not to throw them in the garbage, but to give them back to the earth. So that's giving them back to your body or to give them to the earth, to other creation and creatures to, to enjoy. Um, so if you would do that after worship, um, please do so. Also, don't forget our Bible study starts this Wednesday at seven. You should receive a link to that in your email. If you're not receiving my emails, please let me know that so I can make sure you're on our mailing list. Send me your Mother's Day photos of the women who've made a great difference in your life. You can email those to media at avonumc.net. Our mobile food pantry is this Thursday. So if you have people that need food, please let them know about it. It's at two o'clock. And then another big thanks to the worship team who helps me so faithfully every week to Richard, Hunter, Glenn, Neil, Margaret, and to Larry. Um, can't do it without them. And so I'm, I'm so very grateful to all of them. 
And now everybody's thumbs up for, for the worship team. I love seeing some of y'all do that. Um, today for our benediction, I invite you to do what we do in the life of our congregation every Sunday. If you're with people in your household, hold hands. If you're flying solo, put your hands out towards the screen to show that we are still connected, that we go forth united in Christ. But um, I'm saying it wrong, that we go forth united as one, but more importantly, that we go forth united in Christ. And now go forth knowing that, that God is always, always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials, no matter what hardships come your way, God is right there beside you, always filling your cup to overflowing, always guiding, always directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is as true and as holy as any feeling, including the feelings of joy, hope, and love. Go forth in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.